Hello students, today we are going to discuss an important topic from the physics that is here. We are going to deal with vectors. Now vectors is a very important concept which we will be using in physics. So first of all, to start with vectors, one must know what is scalar quantity. Scalar quantity kya hoti hai? So when we talk about scalar quantity, that is going to be basically a quantity which has only magnitude, no direction. So that is your scalar quantity. So when we talk about a scalar quantity, it's a quantity which has only magnitude. Now when we see its definition or we can say that scalar quantity is defined as a quantity which has only magnitude and of course it will have a unit. Now when we talk about a magnitude means like if we talk about distance, so distance is measured in terms of meter, let's say 15 meter, 20 meter. So over there 15, 20, they are basically your magnitude. So if I talk about distance, so distance is in scalar quantity, right? And it has magnitude, let's say 15. And also it has a unit. So unit is going to be meter, centimeter or millimeter, anything it could be, right? So that's in scalar quantity. Now, but when I talk about vector, so vector is basically a quantity that has magnitude and as well as direction. So most important vector are those which have magnitude and as well as specified direction. So when we talk about vector, we have an example of force. Suppose there is an object and we are applying a force of let's say 5 Newton. So this 5 is going to be the magnitude. Newton will be of course unit and this is the direction. So it's a vector quantity. So distance is just a scalar. But when we talk about force over here, it's an example of vector quantity, right? So anything which has magnitude and as well as direction is going to be your vector. Now we have representation of vector. How we are going to represent a vector means a vector ko hum kis tarah se represent kar sakte that we are going to see. So when we talk about a vector, it has basically a tail that is the starting point of the vector. And we also have a head that is the ending point. So this is initial point and this is going to be final point and this will be its direction that is from tail to head. So starting point in the vector is called as your tail and the ending point is your head. So this is the direction from tail to head and this is going to be the length. So that will be your magnitude. So we have magnitude and as well as direction. Now when we move further. We have a question based on this. Now let's see the question. What question says, which of the following quantity is a vector quantity? They are asking us which of the quantity is your vector. So if I talk about mass, mass is a scalar quantity, 15 kg, 20 kg. So that's a scalar. Even we talk about power. So power is also a scalar quantity, right? Now when we talk about energy, so energy also has no direction. So again, it's a scalar quantity but importantly as we have discussed force now what is force force is your vector quantity so which option is going to be the correct one option number a so a is your vector quantity that is your force i hope you understood it now let's see further so we have various types of vectors now what are those let's see one by one so the first one is your polar vectors now what do you mean by polar vectors polar vector means having a starting point like we have seen in the case of displacement, you can see it from the diagram that there is a starting point and you are applying a force. So this is basically your point of application and let's say this is your vector and it is making an angle of theta with horizontal line. So th that's a uh, representation of which quantity that's a representation of polar vectors. I hope you understood it. Now the next one is your axial vectors. Now vectors First one we have seen that those were polar. Now we are seeing axial vectors. Now what are axial vectors? Axial vectors basically represents rotational effects and are always along the axis of rotation. Suppose, let's say you have this as an axis and suppose there is a particle P which is at a distance of let's say R unit from the axis and you are applying a force. So basically this particle is going to rotate about this axis. So this will be your axis right so the axial vectors are going to be along the 
axis. Now you have applied a force and using a right hand thumb rule, you can see that let's say this is our distance and this is the point of application of force. So thumb indicates your axial vectors. So when we talk about examples of it, we have angular displacement, angular velocity, angular acceleration, and of course, torque. So these are the basically representations of those vectors and these are going to be always along the axis. So they are going to be your axial vectors, right? Now we have another that is your diagram which shows that suppose this is an axis and let's say this is the distance and you are applying a force. So over here the axial vector is going to be your torque. I hope you understood it. Now let's move further. So we have a question based on this. Now what does, what does the question says that why current is not a vector although it appears to possess a direction and of course it has a magnitude as well. So here we are asking that current is a such quantity which is a magnitude and a direction. Bhi hota hai. So it has to be a vector but why it is not a vector. So basically in case of current, see we have studied, we have studied the standard definition that anything which has magnitude and as well as direction, it is going to be a vector. But in case of current, when we talk about current, suppose we have a point, let's say that is your junction and current is coming from to this junction from one side and from the other and going in the third direction. So let's say this is of current 2 ampere and this one is of 3 ampere. So what current will come out of this junction that is going to be a 5 ampere. So th that is basically you have just done the algebraic sum. So whenever the algebraic sum is feasible, so that's only possible case when it's a scalar. For vector, there are some other rules to add two vectors or two or more vectors. So th those vector rules were not satisfied for the case of current. So that's where the current is going to be your scalar quantity. Now we are going to see some other types of vectors. Let's see one by one what are those. So the first one is zero vector. Now what is zero vector? A vector which has a zero magnitude is going to be your zero vector, right? So that's a vector which has zero magnitude that will be your zero vector. Now when we see the next one, we have a proper vector. A proper vector is going to be basically a vector having non-zero magnitude means suppose our vector hai or this magnitude let's say 3, 4 anything hai. so that is going to be your proper vector right that means it has a length length means it has a magnitude right that is it has a tail and it has a head so basically that is going to be your proper vector right now we have another term that is your like vectors. Now, like vectors kya hote hain? basically, if we talk about like vectors, ke andar, suppose we have this one as your first vector and this one as your second vector. So if they are in same direction, now their directions are same irrespective of magnitude. Like ek chota hai, ek bada hai, to magnitude pe depend nahi kar raha hai. Sirf uska agar direction same hai, so they are going to be your like vectors. So, Two vectors are said to be like if they are in same direction irrespective of magnitude. Next one, if we say what is unlike vectors. Now, two vectors are said to be unlike if they are in opposite direction irrespective of magnitude. This is our example of unlike vectors. Ka. Suppose, one force ka direction is there and the other force ka direction is there. Now force is a vector quantity. Ek lo, let's say 3 Newton ka force is lag raha hai, or let's say 5 Newton is just kiss direction mein lag raha hai, opposite direction. Mein. So those two vectors are going to be your unlike vectors. Now we have equal vectors. Now what is equal vector? As by the name itself suggests that equal vectors or equivalent vectors are those which are having equal magnitude and also they are in same parallel support and they are in same direction. Now when I talk about its diagram, suppose this is one vector and let's say this one is another vector. Now their magnitude also has to be same and direction also has to be same. Now what is support? Support is basically an imaginary line to which both the vectors are basically going to be your parallel. So that is going to be a support. So they have a same or a parallel support and they are equal in magnitude and as well as they have the direction also same. 
so that is going to be your equal vectors now the next one is your diagram that this is a vector this is c vector and this is b vector so basically let's say this is the support line for this three vectors so they have equal magnitude they are all in same direction and have the parallel support so these are going to be your equal vectors now we have another term that is collinear vectors now two or more vectors are said to be collinear when they are parallel right irrespective of magnitude and direction that means if i say let's say this is one vector and this is another vector so they are parallel right magnitude may differ but their direction must be same or they must be in opposite direction also that is also going to be your collinear why because collinear ki agar hum baat kare to magnitude chahe kuch bhi ho jaye direction ya to parallel hona chahiye ya anti parallel hona chahiye magnitude is irrespective magnitude kuch bhi ho koi farak nahi padta so that is going to be your collinear vector right so if i ask you that every equal vector is a collinear vector yes of course humne jo isse previous dekha so that that was basically your equal vectors to so equal vectors collinear to hain because they are in same direction ab wahan pe magnitude bhi same ho gaya so they are equal right but agar main bolu kya every collinear vector is an equal to usme problem hai right because direction same ho bhi jaye but magnitude same ka hai so every collinear vector is not a equal vector but every equal vector is a collinear vector right now we have coinitial vector now what does this coinitial means two vectors having same starting point that is let's say if this is one vector and this one is another vector and both the vectors have a same starting point so that is going to be your coinitial vector this is like you can see there are four vectors a vector b vector c vector and d vector all are starting from the origin so they are starting from the origin so their initial point is origin so they are all coinitial vectors now when we see the next one we have coplanar vectors now what is coplanar vectors suppose if i say this board is a plane and i am drawing let's say these are your basically three vectors right so they all are in same plane that means they are coplanar so what is the definition that is three or more vectors are called coplanar if they all lie in the same plane or they are parallel to the same plane let's say if i talk about this stylus so this is also going to be coplanar because it is also parallel to this plane so you can just take this on this plane so that's going to be a coplanar i hope it is clear now we have to note this important point now what's an important in this that two free vectors are always coplanar means agar koi bhi do vector hain to hum un do vectors ko contain karne wala ek plane le sakte hain suppose if i talk about these two things so inko contain karne wala bhi ek plane to hoga hi hoga definitely right so do vector hamesha coplanar honge you must know this now the next one is your negative vector now what is negative vector basically a vector having the same magnitude as that of the given vector but direction is going to be just opposite like for example if i have a vector as this now let's say if this is your a vector so negative of a vector is going to be your this now what's interesting in these two that they are of same magnitude but their direction is just opposite fine so that is going to be your negative of a vector means agar aap kisi vector ko minus se multiply kar rahe hain that means you are changing its direction and magnitude will remains same right now we have this as your diagram which i have explained you that this is going to be a vector and this will be your minus of a vector now let's move further so we have unit vector now interestingly what is unit vector a vector whose magnitude is going to be one that is unit right so unit vector wo vector hai jiska magnitude kya hoga one unit hoga now unit vector ko generally hum represent karte hain using the symbol a cap now for instance agar main bolu hamare paas jo hamara a vector hai 
let's say it is going to be your something like 2i cap plus 3j cap plus of 4k cap. Now, if I ask you what is going to be its magnitude, right? So, magnitude is going to be basically under root of, if we take magnitude, nikale, so that is going to be a vector ka mod. So, that will be under root of 2 ka square plus kitna, that will be 3 square and then we have 4 square. So, once we simplify this further, so 4 plus 9 plus 16, so that is going to be your under root of 29. So, here we have this vector ka magnitude kitna hai under root of 29. So, if I ask you, is this a unit vector? Of course, it's not a unit vector because its magnitude is not 1. But once we divide this vector by this magnitude, let's say what I'm saying that once you divide the vector by its magnitude, let's say we call that as a unit vector. So, that is going to be what? 2 by root 29 i cap plus how much? 3 by root 29 j cap and plus of 4 by root 29 k cap. So, when we talk about this vector, that is we have divided any vector by its magnitude. Now, once I ask you, is this a unit vector? So, definitely you will uh, calculate its magnitude like as you did over here, that under root of 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square. Similarly, in that fashion, once you calculate this, you are going to have 4 by 29. 9 by 29 and 16 by 29. So, that is going to be, once you take the LCM, so that will be 29 by 29. So, definitely it is going to be 1. So, to calculate a unit vector, this is going to be the formula that you have to divide a vector by its magnitude and you will get a unit vector. I hope it is clear. Now, we have question based on this. Now, what does the question says that this is the vector and you have to just calculate unit vector in the direction of a vector. So, if I ask you what's going to be its magnitude, so that's going to be basically your under root of 1 square plus of minus 1 square and plus of 1 square. So, once you calculate this further, so this comes out as root 3. So, you have to just divide it by root 3. So, you will have D as your correct option. So, this is going to be the unit vector which will be in the direction of a vector. Fine. Now, we have another important thing that is angle between two vectors. So, what is going to be the angle? Let's say if this is your one vector and let's say this is your another vector. Let's say this one is your A vector and this one is your B vector. So, basically we have to calculate this theta that is your angle between two vectors. So, basically do remember that when you are calculating angle between two vectors, so what you have to exactly do is you have to keep two vectors as your co-initial vectors or you can say that their tail must coincide and the theta can be basically anything between 0 to pi. Now, why 0 to pi? You have the diagram for this. Once we have taken this as a vector and this as b vector, so this is going to be basically an angle theta. Now, here the theta is basically your acute, right? So, that will be 0 to 90. Now, when we talk, take this, let's say this is a vector and wherever the head of the a vector is ending, from there we have taken a tail of b vector and we have taken in this direction. So, you have to extend a further. So, this is going to be the angle basically between a vector and b vector. Now, this angle is going to be basically look like as this. So, that is going to be your obtuse. So, that will be from 90 to 180. So, in general, we can conclude that the theta is going to be between 0 to pi. So, this is how we are going to calculate the angle between two vectors, right? Now, we have a multiplication of a vector by a scalar. That means, suppose we are given a vector and we are multiplying it by a scalar. So, what is going to happen? So, when we see, we have one vector that is a vector and over here we are having a lambda that is your scalar, right? For instance, let's say we have a vector and that is going to be equals to what? Let's say it is 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus of 4 k cap. Now, what you are going to do? You are going to multiply a lambda to it. Lambda is, it could be anything constant. So, let's say if you have multiplied it by 3. So, b vector, basically you are taking lambda as 3 means you are finding out it as 3 times of a vector. So, what we can write it as 
V vector will come out as what? 6 i cap plus how much? 9 j cap plus how much? 12 k cap. So, this is how we are going to multiply a scalar with a vector. Now, what is interesting that if this lambda is positive, right? So, basically they are in same direction, but we can say that the magnitude of A is less and B is three times of the magnitude of A, right? So, this is going to be a case of we can say they are like vectors or we can say they are collinear vectors because they are in same direction, right? If lambda is going to be negative, like if you take lambda is minus 3, so basically they are going to be in opposite direction, again they are collinear. So, you can take this as a condition of collinearity also that if one vector is lambda times another vector, so that is going to be basically these two vectors are going to be your collinear vectors. I hope it is clear. Now we have an important point that is magnitude becomes lambda times the another. As I said, let us say if a vector whose magnitude we have calculated earlier also that was under root 29, but you are multiplying it by lambda. Let us say lambda is 3. So, magnitude is going to become thrice, right? So, that is an important point to be noted. Now, we have division of a vector by a scalar. Like earlier, we have studied multiplication of a vector, uh, multiplication of a scalar by a vector. Now, we are going to study division of a vector by a scalar. So, when we talk about division of a vector by a scalar, so that scalar has to be basically non zero. Non zero means it cannot be zero because if it becomes zero, so that is going to be your undefined, right? So, what we are going to have, we are going to have m and that m has to be basically non-zero. So, basically division of a vector by a, division of a scalar by a vector is going to be basically multiplication of 1 by m, right? So, again, it is going to give you a condition of, as I said, that they are collinear vectors. Now, in this case, if I say, let us say m is 3. So, we can say that the new vector which comes out is that will have one third of magnitude of what we have. राइट right? मतलब जो भी बी वेक्टर का मैग्नीट्यूड है ए का जो भी मैग्नीट्यूड होगा दैट विल बी 1/3 ऑफ द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ बी राइट सो दैट्स अगेन अ कंडीशन ऑफ कोलिनियर वेक्टर नाउ वी हैव क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन दिस नाउ व्हाट डज द क्वेश्चन सेस दैट सपोज देयर इज अ फिजिकल क्वांटिटी लेट्स से अ मास व्हिच इज ऑफ 3 केजी एंड इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाय अ वेक्टर ए सच दैट फोर्स इज इक्वल्स टू मास इनटू एक्सेलरेशन सो वी हैव फोर्स इक्वल्स टू मास इनटू एक्सेलरेशन एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड द मैग्नीट्यूड and the direction of f, right? So, if acceleration is 3 meter per second square towards east, now you must be knowing that this is going to be your east, right? This one will be your north. This is going to be your west and this one will be your south. So, if I ask you that you are given the mass, you are given an acceleration. Now, again, acceleration is vector quantity and if acceleration is a vector, and this m is a scalar. So, as I said, multiplication of scalar by a vector is going to give you a vector. So, if the acceleration is along 3 meter per second square towards the east, so force is also going to be towards the east and that is going to be how much? 3 into 3. So, that will be how much? So, force will be acting towards the east is going to be a 9 newtons. So, that, that will be the direction of force for the first case. So, I can say over here that acceleration and force both are in same direction, right? So, they are basically a collinear, but a magnitude may differ, right? Actually, it differs because acceleration's magnitude was 3 and the force was 9 Newton, right? Now, once we talk about the next one is acceleration minus 4 meter per second square northwards. Now, if I ask you minus 4 towards the north, so that is if you take a negative of vector, so that will be 4 towards south, right? Or we can say if you want to take it as that it is going to be basically towards the north only. If you want to take it as towards the north, so we can take the sign as well. So, if minus 4 is towards the north, means acceleration is not Negative acceleration indicates that what is happening Retardation is So, if I ask you the to calculate the magnitude of force, so acceleration is minus 4 and mass is 3. So, magnitude of force is going to be what? 12 Newton. Now, as they are asking only the magnitude, so it is not necessary to indicate the direction. But you can say that 12 Newton force and that will be retarding force towards the north. Is that clear? Now we have another important thing related to this that is going to be your laws of addition and subtraction of vectors. Like we want to study 
that how two vectors can be added or subtracted for that we have certain laws so let us discuss it one by one now for that we have graphical method and also we have mathematical method so first we are going to study graphical method so suppose in this first we have triangle rule of vector addition means we want to add two vectors using triangle law right so there are certain steps for adding two vectors representing same physical quantity by a triangle law and what are those steps so we have to keep vectors such that tail of one vector coincides with the head of another for instance let's say this is your one vector whose tail is over here and head is over here let's say this is your a vector right and another vector we have to take such a way that the tail of another vector coincides with the head of the previous vector right so this is going to be your b vector so basically you will have a resultant joining tail to tail and head to head so that is going to be a c vector or you can take it as the resultant vector so let's say that will be your r vector so this is basically your triangle law so the first point was clear join second point was join tail of first to head of the other by a line with a arrow at the head of the second means you have to just take the resultant as tail is joined with tail and head is joined with head so that is going to be a resultant vector right and the new vector is going to be the sum of two vectors and also count the resultant vectors so that's the diagram and i said this is a vector this is b vector and this is going to be your c vector so basically we have r vector or c vector that will be equals to a vector plus b vector so this is basically your triangle law of vector addition now that's a graphical method now based on this we have a question now what does the question say is that a body moves 4 meters south and the 5 meter in the direction of 37 degree east of north we have to find the resultant displacement so basically we will take a body that moves 4 meters south so 4 meters south means in this direction now that's a basically body is moving towards the south that is going to be your how much 4 meter and the 5 meter in the direction 37 degree east of north now if i ask you east of north so this is going to be basically east and this is going to be your basically north so if i say east of north means you have to take an angle 37 degree east of north means you have to take an angle with north now this is given to you as 37 degree right and body is moving in this way right so that is earlier it moves towards 4 meter and then 5 meter in the direction of 37 degree east of north so that is in this direction so i can say that this is going to be basically a 5 meter right and we have to find the resultant displacement so let's say this is initial position right now earlier it has gone towards this now that is basically your 37 degree and then 5 meters towards this point so if i ask you this is initial and this is final so displacement is going to be basically final minus initial so this will be your basically displacement so now let's take this as x now you have this as your 37 degree now you can even apply the pythagoras theorem to get the value of x and the value of x comes out as your 3 now how does 3 comes out as because 5 square is 25 you know the pythagoras theorem so hypotenuse square minus this is going to be base that is 4 square that is 16 so 25 minus 16 is going to be your 9 and under root of 9 will give you this as 3 so this is going to be basically your 3 meter right so the resultant displacement is going to be your 3 i hope you understood it now we have polygon law of addition now what is basically your polygon law now polygon law is basically let's say you are adding more than two vectors so we are going to use polygon law now this is again an extension of triangle law of addition we will understand it so we have a arrangement such a way that next vector lies on the head of the former so we will see to it that how does it looks like suppose this is your a vector now this is going to be b so this will be the resultant as per the triangle law that will be a plus b right 
Now again we have C vector in this direction, right? So again we apply a triangle law. So this is going to be our A vector plus B vector plus C vector. So every time what you are going to see that resultant vectors has the uh, same as your head and the initial point for the C vector is going to be the same. Now means what I mean to say that this is A plus B and this is C. So head of A plus B coincides with the upcoming vector that is your C vector and this will be your basically A vector plus B vector plus C vector. And then again you have A vector plus B vector plus C vector then upcoming vector is D vector that coincides with the head of the resultant and in this way it's going to continue. So that's your polygon law, right? So the final edge of the polygon if I say, so that is going to be the resultant, let's say this is P. So P vector is going to be vector addition of all those edges that is A plus B plus C plus D. So that's going to be your polygon law. I hope you understood it. Thank you.